Ah, The Flash. Fastest Man Alive, Savior of Central City, and the origin of many, many fine timeline memes. Yes, while everybody's favorite red-suited speedster has pulled off some insane feats of speed now and again throughout the Arrowverse, the idea that Barry usually leans towards time travel fuckery to fix most of the problems he runs into, no pun intended, seems to be one of the few things most people who watch this show fixate on for some reason. Although, to be fair, he does do it a good bit, so I guess that probably has something to do with it. Dad dies? Better make a new timeline and fix that shit. Can't figure out how to get faster? Let me go back in time and ask my biggest enemy real quick. Broke a gadget? Go back to that exact same moment from earlier and barely even try to explain it away. Seriously, Barry must have had that limited time double timeline fucking bonus or something. Double points! Hell, time travel was literally the first thing he thought of to try to deal with Crisis early. Or at least he tried to use it anyway, that didn't really work out too well. Either way though, time travel's usually been a nice and easy excuse for the writers to go and change virtually anything on the show because it's super convenient. You can do pretty much anything you want, then just erase it later and say everything you just saw didn't count. But what if it did? What if Barry actually tried to solve whatever problem he was running away from instead of taking the easy way out and trying to get a do-over? What do you think would happen in that unchanged timeline, and how would it affect the rest of the season? I mean, it is an interesting question, especially when you start to think about it while re-watching Barry's accidental time traveling at the end of the season 1 episode, Out of Time. After kidnapping Joe and luring Iris to the waterfront, weather wizard Mark Martin summoned a big-ass tidal wave to destroy pretty much all of Central City as revenge for Joe killing his brother Clyde back in the pilot. Taking Caitlin's advice, Barry tried to make a big wind wall to stop the tidal wave, accidentally traveling back in time to the previous day in the process and allowing him to stop Martin before he got to the waterfront. But what if Barry didn't push himself to an emotional extreme in that moment? Or he didn't need to go that fast to make that wind wall? What would happen then? Well, right off the bat, we know the Team Flash roster would have taken a massive hit, with Cisco, Joe, and Caitlyn all getting killed off more or less in the same day, and newer additions like Eddie Thawne possibly not joining up altogether. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Cisco, we already know about, we don't need to get into that one too much. As far as Joe goes, I figure he probably would have bought it like right after Martin's tidal wave got shut down. I mean, the guy was ready to wipe out an entire city as revenge for his brother's death, so it's not exactly like it'd be out at left field either. Now, sure, could Barry get there in time to save him? Probably, yeah. But considering how he doesn't exactly know where Joe is, I doubt he'd have been able to run out and find Martin before he ended up killing Joe. Now, as far as Caitlyn goes, I'm actually going to go into more detail on this in a bit, but long story short, Wells up and vanished right in front of her while they were at Jitters, pretty much confirming the accusations Cisco made about him back at Star Labs. And since we know he's already in the mindset of tying up loose ends, I guarantee you that means Caitlyn would be on the chopping block soon afterwards. So, yeah, no vibe and no Killer Frost in this timeline. But at least Barry gets with Iris way sooner than usual. Hooray. I mean, the two of them did manage to confirm their feelings for each other right before Barry would have saved the city, so it's not hard to imagine they'd start dating at some point afterwards. Of course, that does mean Eddie would get insanely pissed and want nothing to do with either of them afterwards, but even then, I still think he'd call Barry to help out with whatever metahuman crimes popped up from that point on. I mean, come on, he'd be mad, not stupid. Speaking of stupid, though, let's switch back to Barry for a second. Without everybody at Star Labs holding his hand in every fight, Barry would have to get way more competent way faster than he did in the current timeline, either researching and making his own gadgets to help him out in the field, or just paying attention during any of his fights and finding the super obvious weaknesses most of these metas had before they roughed him up too much. It's because of the research part that I imagine he'd probably find Gideon a few episodes faster than he originally did, maybe while looking for spare parts and equipment, and or exploring Star Labs for any of the other secrets Eobard might have left lying around. And who knows? Whenever Barry ended up finding her, he'd probably realize having a futuristic supercomputer would be a great asset in the field and incorporate her into a suit earlier than before. Regardless though, actually being competent at the whole superhero game would also help him figure out who Wells really is right away too. Especially when both Caitlyn and Iris' co-worker at Central City Picture News, Mason Bridge, practically spelled it out for Barry before he time-traveled. If you remember earlier in the episode, Sisko convinced Caitlyn to keep Dr. Wells distracted at Jitters so he could look over what should have been a successful reverse flash trap. Are you suggesting that Dr. Wells is in league with the man in the yellow suit? I mean, we all saw that thing nearly kill him that night. Yeah, nearly. Problem is, leaving his wheelchair behind and killing off Sisko pretty much confirmed all those accusations he made earlier, so Caitlyn clearly knows Wells is actually the reverse flash. The interesting part, though, is whether or not she'd be able to tell Barry about it before Eobard got to her. I mean, she definitely was going to before the tidal wave came in, so we know she would. Caitlin. Barry, 
I need to talk to you, to Dr. Wells. Here... Well, there's, there's no time for that right now. It's just a question of whether or not Eobard could find her first, which shouldn't be that hard since Caitlyn was just chilling at Star Labs before the tidal wave incident. Even if she doesn't get the message out before she's murdered, though, there's also all that evidence Mason Bridge has that could force Barry to admit there's something shady about Harrison Wells. Halfway through the episode, Barry tries visiting Iris at work, only to bump into Bridge, who starts throwing around a bunch of his own accusations about Wells, up to and including how he's responsible for Simon Stagg's disappearance, given that he's the last known person to have seen Stagg alive. And then one time, he met up with Simon Stagg, and then poof, no more Simon Stagg. So... You're saying Wells knows where Stag is? No, I'm saying Wells killed him. I mean, I know Wells is pretty good at lying to Barry, but two people close to him dead, plus that initial article Bridge was writing, and whatever else he had on his drive? Yeah, that's way too much of a coincidence. And Barry's not an idiot. Well, season one Barry wasn't anyway, he was just a little bit slow. Point is, if he could figure out who Wells really was just based on a few lines about the Speed Force during the Tricksters episode, then I'm pretty sure the mountain of evidence dumped in his lap from all this other stuff would make figuring out the identity of the Reverse Flash a no-brainer. So, okay, let's say Barry figures out who Eobard really is a few episodes early. What happens to Thawne afterwards? I mean, obviously Barry wouldn't want to train with him anymore, and he'd have to give up Star Labs, so is his plan to get back to his time screwed? Yeah, a little bit, but probably not that much. I mean, Barry's still going to be running around catching metahumans, and because he wouldn't have as much backup in this timeline, I imagine he'd probably push himself even harder during his now solo training sessions, so either way he's still getting faster. And because Thawne would still need Barry to reach a certain milestone for his plan to even kinda work, I figure he'd probably do what Zoom did in Season 2, and either start causing problems for Barry to solve like pointing bad guys in his direction, or even possibly jumping in himself and fighting Barry from time to time, whenever he could spare some extra speed. Either way, we'd probably even see the first actual team-up of the rogues, with Eobard freeing all the big names Barry fought by this point, probably like what Snart did during the prison transfer in the Rogue Air episode, and seeing how well he does against a team of bad guys. I mean, we know some of Barry's early training involved multitasking, so why not, right? Eventually though, Thawne would have to come back to Star Labs and do what he did towards the end of Season 1, reactivate the Particle Accelerator so he could get Barry to time travel and open up that wormhole so he can go back to the future. Now I have no problem believing Barry might be more hesitant to go back and change anything in this timeline, since being with Iris probably help him be a bit more stable and actually think about what all he's about to do. But after some thought, I think he'd still probably go back if Eobard reminded him how many people close to him ended up dying this time around. Which he probably would because Thawne's a bit of a dick. Why did you kill my mother? Because I hate you. WHAT AN ASSHOLE! Either way though, I feel like Barry would call on everybody he could to talk things over and make sure things went smoothly, but because most of the Team Flash is either dead or probably very mad still, we'd really only be guaranteed to see Martin Stein, Iris, and Ronnie this time around. Iris obviously, and Stein slash Ronnie because even though Caitlyn isn't there to give Ronnie an incentive to stick around, I think the idea of getting revenge on the reverse Flash for killing her, plus Barry needing that scientific expertise to talk pseudoscience with, would be enough to get Firestorm to hang out for the season finale again. Anyways, with Thawne's help, Barry finally travels back for the first time in the season finale, and like in the original finale, he doesn't save his mom before coming back to the present to fight Thawne. Same reasons apply, the extra interference from the original version of himself, so nothing major's changing there. Now having said that, I wouldn't blame anybody for thinking things would happen like they did in the actual season finale, with Eddie killing himself to stop the reverse flash, and Ronnie dying after helping Barry close the wormhole that formed afterwards. However, I'd argue that Barry would actually end up beating Thawne on his own. I mean yeah, Ronnie would still end up dead, but Eddie wouldn't need to shoot himself. Hooray. I mean, for one thing, Barry would be way more pissed during this fight, what with all the dead people Thawne's been leaving all over the place, and having to listen to his mom dying like right in the next room. And as any Flash fan could tell you, a pissed off Barry usually ends up completely wiping the floor with whoever he's fighting, or holding his own way better than he should since he's actually going all out, like when he chased down Zoom in the race of his life, or fought Savitar in the Wrath of Savitar. Now to be fair, Thawne could run in and grab the equipment he was hiding under his chair before this fight, just go back to charging himself up in preparation for a moment like this, but considering how he never bothers doing so in the show's timeline, I feel like he probably wouldn't waste his time doing it in this version of events either, even if he did stop supercharging himself earlier than before. Also, I know Thawne usually kept tabs on Barry and his progress while everybody was still at Star Labs, but after getting kicked out, he wouldn't really have a solid way of knowing exactly how much faster Barry managed to get at any point without jumping in directly, which we know he couldn't do often since his speed would still be all over the place. It'd be a real Red Ribbon Army type scenario, with Thawne planning for one speed level, then getting his ass handed to him when he finds out Barry's actually been at an entirely different level the whole time. 
Either way, I'm sure the Singularity would still end up forming, since it's tied to all of Thawne's equipment, and he definitely still would have included a giant middle finger failsafe, so Ronnie would still probably end up dying the same way, and Barry would still be super mopey heading into Season 2. So yeah, the alternate Season 1 mostly ends the same, but there's a ton of differences that came out of one seemingly insignificant change, right? And keep in mind, this was all just the main major stuff we more or less know for sure would happen if Barry didn't time travel. There's plenty of other things we could speculate on, like whether or not certain villains would even appear in Central City, how soon we might see Nora or Dawn or whatever Barry and Iris named their kid this time around, when the Reverse Flash would break out, and what all he would do afterwards. More importantly though, who knows what all this means for future seasons? Like what if, for whatever reason, the Singularity doesn't open this time around? Does Zoom even know that he needs to make his way over to Earth-1? And if he does, then clearly he's not falling in love with Caitlyn, so does he just fucking murder Barry after stealing his speed? Who else is joining Team Flash at this point? Definitely a ton more to unpack, but that's definitely a video for another time. But anyways guys, that's my take on what all could have happened in Season 1 if Barry never went back in time during the fight against Mark Martin. Definitely go ahead and let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. If there's other changes you think could have popped up in this alternate first season, or even if you want to see me do a part 2 for this video and talk about how different Season 2 would be in this timeline. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then go ahead and click that like button, and if you're new, maybe consider clicking that subscribe button too. I've also got links to my Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon in the description. You should probably check those out too. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can click the link to my last video. It's right there in the middle of your screen. Alright, and I will see you all next time.